Hello and welcome to everyone today. We have a very, very special guest. And uh, honestly, I'm a very big fan of yours, uh, Mighty Mouse. Thank you so much for accepting this invitation. And uh, your UFL is pretty much, not gonna lie to you, pretty much unknown outside of US, but I'm a very, very diehard fan of every martial art and I'm very, very honored to have you here. So what can you say in general about UFL? How did you come to the idea? How did it come to fruition? What is the story behind UFL? What are the rules? Who is uh, who fights? You know everything about the promotion, like life story. Go for it. Uh, yeah, I appreciate that, man. Thanks a lot. Um, well, we're, we're an underground fight league, man. Basically, we're non-sanctioned, which means um, nobody has to have a license to fight. Uh, we basically cater to bad neighborhoods, gang members, um, people um, that have never fought before, all the way up to pro fighters. We match guys basically by experience level and by weight. If they want to do MMA, if they want to box, if they want to do bare knuckle, whatever it is, we, we try to match everybody up equally as far as weight and experience goes. Um, we've had gang on gang beef uh, fights where gangs are able to put down the guns and pick up the gloves. That's basically our biggest movement, man, is the guns down, gloves up movement, man. It's basically being able to get guys to agree to not kill each other, not shoot each other, but put gloves on instead. Everybody's not going to do it, but we've had a lot of people that have. We've been out in really bad neighborhoods, Philly, Camden, New Jersey, Queens, Brooklyn, Bronx, um, Dallas. We've been in some bad areas, man, really bad Pittsburgh. Um, and we've had gang members that have been able to do it. We just had Bloods and Crips uh, fight down in Texas last weekend. Um, and with nobody getting killed. Uh, basically, that's the movement. The movement got started, man, um, basically just being in the streets, man. And um, it started with me making videos of myself sparring and working out and training. And then a lot of other guys wanting to get in. And it just started going up from there. And then we put on our first fights out in Richmond um, about a year and a half ago. And uh, when we put on those fights, man, it just blew up from there. And now we're going nationwide. We're going to the U.K. We got a, we got a big fan base out in the U.K. right now. So um, we're going to be going out to England um, sometime this year. Uh, we're trying to travel around with it, man. We got a lot of guys that want us to come to Canada, Australia. Um, so, but you know, we, we got right now. I got about five different states lined up. We're going back down to Texas. I got um, I got Cleveland. I got Detroit. Uh, we're doing something in Baltimore and um, probably in South Carolina coming up. So, Miami. in Miami, we got a big 305. It's called 305 Day down in Miami uh, with Uli Monster, Dada 5000. We're putting on a big show down there. Um, on on uh, uh, March 5th, so it's it's going down, man, and we're, and we're getting bigger and bigger. We just did a thing for National Geographic, which is a worldwide cable television station, um, and National Geographic actually wants to come out to our next event, so we're going to be doing things with National Geographic all over the place. That's really, really outstanding. So I don't know how much time you do have, but uh, I was about to ask you about uh, the meaning of your tattoos, if okay to you. Um, all these are done in prison, man. I got a lot of prison tattoos. Um, I did 16 years in prison altogether. I did two years in juvenile correctional center. Um, everything is gang related. Um, a lot of different, uh, like death stuff. Um, I'm a Christian now, man. So I got Christian stuff on me as well. You know what I mean? But, um, you know, the life that I live is just different times and, and different eras that I lived in, man. So I got tattoos all the way. Like I said, I got gang tattoos all the way to Christian tattoos, man. So just different steps. I started getting tattoos when I was 15, man. So it's just different eras in my life. Um, I'm fully covered pretty much. Um, I got a few little spots left to get, but other than that, I'm pretty much fully covered, man. And I got to actually got a tattoo video on my YouTube station, man. I explaining it tattoo for tattoo pretty much. Really, really outstanding. Got to look at that video. So how do you pursue a regular person? Like you said, gang, gang member, right? How do you persuade him to drop the gun and uh, put the glove on? I mean, that's not easy, right? No, no it's not easy, man. Uh, like, uh, you know, I'm good. At, and like I said, my, my mom's from Lebanon, so I'm, I'm part Middle Eastern and, and, I'm, and I'm part white, man. So I'm able to get into some of these areas um, that a lot of people can't get into. We get, we get escorted in by different gang members like Camden, New Jersey. We got in there with the Bloods. There was no way that we could get on the streets without the Bloods escorting us in. Same way with Miami. Um, we were in a Crip neighborhood. There was no way without gunplay that me and Level Martinez was able to get into Opalaka in Miami, same way with Dallas. Um, it, it, it is hard, man, because a lot of these younger guys are not willing to put down the guns to pick up the gloves. It's usually the older older guys that have seen so much death and so many killings that are able to um, do it because they're just tired of it, man. So 
Uh, and they're making the younger guys get in line. The older gang members are making the younger guys do it. They're like, look, you guys are going to pick up these these gloves and you're going to put these guns down, man. You know, they're just tired of seeing the killings, man. And, and they want to and they want to they want it to stop, man. So some of the older guys are that they're they love what we do. We've had the chief of police. We've had the city councilman. Um, they come out and they watch the fights and, and they just they can't. But I've had four different gangs on again. You know, we'll just keep on doing it. Yeah, it's really, really outstanding. So in general, how do you recruit someone to fight? I mean, how do you explain rules? For example, he has never fought before, all right? And how do you explain the rules? How do you recruit him to fight? I mean, for him, he doesn't know to fight, right? And how how does it go? Well, I mean, we ref the fights going, man. Um, mm. If you're not able to follow the rules, then we'll stop the match. We've had, we've had wild fights, man. We had to stop a, a blood and crip fight this last weekend. Um, guy got slammed on his head in a boxing match, and um, they took the gloves off. They were ready to fight without the gloves. One of the guy's girls got punched in the face um, by another girl. I mean, it, it turned into a, an all-out war zone in Dallas. I mean, it was crazy. We had 20 people in the cage at one time. Um, thank God nobody got, you know, in D.C., we had a shooting outside of one of our events in D.C., um, in Washington, D.C., after an event. So anything can happen. But we try to keep the rules basic, man, is, is the same as the UFC and the same as pro boxing, man. We follow the exact rules. We don't we don't step outside of the lines, man. We got, you know, no biting, no kicking in the nuts, no head butting. You know what I mean? We keep the rules about the same, man. You know, we try to make this a sporting event. This is not a this is not a uh, like a human cock fight. This is not a um, this is not a no holds bar. Just try to kill each other thing, man. We wear gloves. You know, we wear MMA gloves. You know, we got mouthpieces. Um, we don't beat people down. Out, you know what I mean? A lot of people might see that it, it's an underground thing, so it's just basically a last man standing fight to the death type thing, and it's not. If you watch the channel, it's not at all like that. Yeah, I actually watched many of your fights, and I was very, very much impressed. What was the secret behind changing your life? I mean, you just decided in one moment that it has been enough and that you want to change your life and become influential. Did it come like overnight or you were thinking? Um, nah, I had to go to prison. I had to go to prison twice, man, for me to figure it out, man. I started, you know, you start watching your family members die. Um, you know, you start losing your kids, you know, from being locked up. They start growing up. You don't never see them. You know, you just get tired of it, man. You got to set that switch inside of your head. I mean, I know guys that have done 20 and 30 years in prison that go back to prison because they just don't know. They, the police killed my brother um, the beginning of the summer. After doing 22 years in prison, my brother couldn't learn. He had to shoot out with the police, and the police killed my brother. You know, so, it, you know, it, 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 you either have to set it in your mind or you're going to spend the rest of your life in there, man. It's something that you have to decide. Um, it's not something that nobody can decide for you. There is no teaching you a lesson type thing. Um, prison doesn't teach you a lesson, man. Other than that, you either get tired of doing it or you're going to do it for the rest of your life. Like I said, if there was a lesson to be taught, you would think somebody that did 20 years, 30 years, would be taught a lesson. Why would you go back? So they're really, the lesson isn't there. Like people think, you know, and it's something that you have to set inside your own mind. And if you don't, um, you're going to keep going back, man. You're going to spend the rest of your life in there. At least in the United States, you're going to spend the rest of your life in there. Unfortunately here, I am from Europe. Um, I live in Serbia, Europe, but here, if you end up once in prison, you're going to end up like second, third, fourth. They offer nothing. They literally offer nothing. They don't learn you to do something. Is that different in the U.S.? Can you learn, for example, I don't know, to I don't know to be like, hmm, I don't know something like uh, anything to do. Can you learn something? I know, I know what you're asking. Yes, in the United States, you can get your GED, you can get your college education in, in the prisons here. You can really? at least in this state, um, you can get um, your welding certificates, you can get barbering licenses, you can get um, heating and air conditioning licenses, you can get um, roofing, um, industrial maintenance, floor covering, um, electrician. There's a lot of different uh, things that you can do in the United States um, as far as getting a skill, a trade, and a labor. So they definitely offer you different things to come out to be successful, but it's up to you to do it. They don't make you do it. So you either want to do it or you don't. Really awesome. I mean, correction system is terrible here, but it seems the U.S. offers uh, a lot of possibilities. How did you come to the idea to create your YouTube channel? But I mean, how did you create uh, like UFL? Why it isn't like UFN or UFC? Why UFL? 
Um, well, it's unsanctioned for one. I don't have, you know, the money or the resources to do a sanctioned fight, which means getting things licensed and stuff like that. Uh, we don't pay fighters. We don't, we don't charge people to get in to fight. Like I don't, or I don't get big arenas and charge guys to come in, man. This is a guns down, gloves up movement. Um, the whole movement is behind putting down the guns and picking up the gloves. Um, it came about, uh, Dwayne Fletcher actually owns the copyright to the guns down, gloves up in Philly. This, these groups have been around for a while. I'm definitely not the first one to do it these type of groups have been around for a long time um i've just made it very big i've bypassed a lot of them made it made it really big to where it's at right now um but you know it's um you know it, it, we're part like i've been on the cover of returning citizen magazine um i go back into the prisons now well not since the covid but i've been going back into the prisons we do stuff for the reentry programs this isn't just a fight station man if you watch the channel it's not a fight station it, that's just part of the gun that's just part of the community resolutions um a lot of this station is prison talk going back into the prisons helping guys get that i help guys get their class a cdls to drive tractor trailers the whole station, man, has just been, like I said, organically built off of me sparring. Um, everything else got added. The live feeds have been added since like the last year. You know what I mean? I, I keep adding more and more and more stuff to the station. A year from now, we might have, I got I got videos on here, instructional videos, boxing videos, workout videos, training videos. Like this is not specifically just a fight uh, station, even though it's called underground fight league, we're, we're, we do way more than that on this channel. So, um, I just did a prison talk the other day with a guy I was in prison with. Um, he actually owns a tractor trailer and, um, I've got guys on here that own tattoo shops now from being in prison guy, you know, so this station just organically built and it all originated off of me sparring videos of just me sparring, um, for my kids so they could see something in case anything ever happened to me. Uh, if I ever died or went back to prison or anything bad happened to me, my kids would have videos to be able to watch of me somehow or another, you know, um, basically, uh, you know, YouTube and all that came about after I got out of prison. When I went to prison, everything was just pretty much pictures or videos. There was no such thing as YouTube and all that stuff. So um, YouTube was basically like a live video bank that I could put videos in without having to put them on DVDs or on VHS cassette type things, you know. Do you offer uh, trainings? Yeah, we train. Um, we got 1913 Sports. We actually uh, go back into some of these projects, um, into bad neighborhoods. I give back gloves, bags, hand wraps, mouthpieces. Man, we go back and we donate a lot into these these projects and stuff like that. And um, I got a whole box still full of stuff that I have to donate next time we go out into Camden or some of these other bad neighborhood Philly or stuff like that. I'll go out in there. I'll donate more stuff when I go out there. But um, it, it's it, but we offer nine, at 1913 Sports. You can come out there and you can train. Um, we got a lot of guys that come out there and train for free. Guys that can't afford gyms and stuff like that. So um, we we definitely do. We got 757 boxing down in um, um Chesapeake. We got Freedom MMA, which is also a free gym for people that can't afford it, which is up in Manassas area up near DC. So we do got gyms, man, that we help a lot of people get into. We got management teams right now. So for any of the guys that come into our yard and fight, they can actually get seen by big management teams and get signed to sanctioned pro contracts. We found, we've already signed probably about seven guys. We just had Savage get signed last week into Capital Fight Management out in Dallas. So we are getting guys signed to fight um, on bigger stages if they want to go. Do you afraid when you enter the bad neighborhood to recruit people? Um, yeah, you know, yeah, I mean, it, 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 you know, sometimes, you know, I, I bring my son out to some of these neighborhoods, man, uh, where I've, where you can see memorials where people have been killed, where people have been shot, where other kids have been killed out there um, with stray bullets and stuff like that. It is, it's, it, it, you know, you, it is, man, but, you know, you can't, you can't, you can't worry about that stuff, man. If you do, you're not going to be able to do what I do. Um, it's always in your mind, you know, when I'm out in Camden and, um, you know, in, in Dallas, like I said, that type of stuff could have happened easily out in Dallas uh, just this last weekend. It, things could have went very bad out in D.C. Like I said, we had a shooting mm -hmm. out front of my event in D.C. So, yeah, there's always those chances that it could happen, man. It, and, you know, you get the butterflies, it, but at the end of the day, man, um, I've had a lot of people, man, Mouse, you're crazy. You shouldn't do that stuff, man. You're, you know, you're nuts. You're going to end up getting shot or whatever, man. But, you know, I mean, it's, it, it's always a possibility. I think you are doing a great job. And, you know, if there was uh, such a people in my state, we wouldn't have so many felonies and such things. But unfortunately, if you talk about this here, People will, would probably laugh, you know, 
but in US, thanks God, there is a person like you. So how do you see yourself in like one, two, three years? Do you have some uh, plans for the future when it comes to promotion expanding? Yeah, like I said, we just now started getting management teams. I think that's a great idea because it gives guys more of an option to um, be seen on bigger stations and for guys to be able to get um, on bigger platforms, man, instead of just fighting in a yard, now they can start getting paid to fight. They can start getting sanctioned fights. They can start getting free gym memberships where they can start really training and, and turning this into a career if they want to. So um, that just recently came about. And we got three management teams right now, uh, Capital Fight Management Team, Certified Sports, and Footwork Productions. So we have three different management teams, and these guys have very big pros on their cards that have actually fought on HBO and Showtime. So they're finding what they call a diamond in the rough, um, basically finding guys that actually have natural genetic abilities to go to the next level. And, um, and I hope that that keeps getting bigger. The television station, we just did National Geographic, um, the – Things just keep getting bigger and the doors keep opening. So um, two or three years from now, I hope it is 10 times bigger and we're still able to keep doing what we're doing um, and, and being able to travel. That's the main thing, man. I, I like to be able to travel. It costs a lot of money. I like, like I said, um, I'm trying to do something over there in, um, in England. I got a lot of people over there in the UK that want us to come over there. So, um, you know, a lot of the stuff costs money. We're not on nobody's payroll. Nobody pays us to do this. Nobody, um, nobody gives us an hourly uh, wages, none of that, man. So, you know, and we have not turned down nothing. We travel all over the United States. We have not missed an event yet due to funds. So we've always been able to get the money to make it happen. And we're going to keep on doing what we're doing. How do you feel when, for example, a hood member calls you and say, thank you. You saved my life. How do you feel about that? Uh, that's what keeps me going, man. Especially on the live feeds. That's what keeps this. That's what keeps me moving forward, man, because that happens a lot. And not just not just what you're saying, but also on the level like, man, Mouse, you got me back into shape. You got me working out again, man. Oh, uh, man, I, I, was, I was literally dying from this, this and this. And, you know, I've lost the weight. I've got my cholesterol down. I've got my blood pressure back in check, man. I stopped drinking alcohol. I'm back to doing this. And it, all that stuff is motivation, man. You know, so, um, you know, it, it keeps me keeps me on the grind just hearing stuff like that. So, yeah, it definitely it definitely keeps me, um, you know keep doing what I'm doing, man. It shows people get on there every day and, and thank me for certain different things. So, um, yeah, that definitely keeps me motivated. Would you like to add something else to the interview? Maybe something we missed. Um, no, man, just stay tuned for what we're doing for all y'all that don't know who we are. And, um, I don't know who's going to see this, but you guys can always go watch the fights, go watch the prison talks, go watch what we do. Um, the station's called mighty mouse UFL. It's on the YouTube. You guys can go watch it. Um, we have, I don't know if you guys have Facebook, we have Facebook group page. It's called official group for UFL fighters. So if you're ever, if, when you're ever, you're on that page, wherever you're at, you can always see the dates, times, and locations of all of our fights. And remember this, you don't need to contact anybody. Whenever you see an address, all you have to do is show up to the event. All the times, dates, and locations are on there and everybody is free to get in. We don't charge anybody, man. Um, this is a guns down, gloves up movement. We're not here to make a profit off of this. So you guys come on out, even if it's just to watch or spectate, you know, show support for the Guns Down, Gloves Up movement, man, no matter where we're at. We always appreciate everybody. And we're on live every day, 10 o'clock Eastern time, 10 o'clock Eastern time, man. We're always on live. So anybody that ever wants to come on a live feed, um, I'm, I'm sure you've been on there. Anybody that wants to come on my live feeds can come on any day. We're always on there answering questions and helping people out, man. Diet tips, whatever you want. Whatever you guys want to talk about, I try to answer as many questions as possible. I I followed your live many times, and that's uh, one of the reasons why I'm a big fan of yours. I just hope it will develop more in Europe, so I hope people will recognize it, because I really think you deserve a lot of attention. No, honestly, that's an honest answer, not like a journalist, like a man-to-man. Yeah, I appreciate that, man. I thank you for having me on, man. Hopefully people will see this in Europe and see, and we are coming. I don't know what part of Europe you are. I, I'm, I'm not really familiar with it, but I know a lot of people come on from the UK that want us to come over there. So we definitely plan on coming over that way sometime this year, man. Well, coming across the pond is definitely a great idea. I will put your links in the description of this interview, okay? Does it work hey. for you? Okay? Thanks a lot. Okay, no problem. I will put the video on creation now. I hope it will be up in like two, three hours, okay? okay? Sounds good, man. Send it to me. All right. Thank you so much. Have a great day and thank you for accepting the interview.
You too. Thanks a lot, man. Appreciate you.